The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Monday, November 7th, 2022, season 18, episode number 65. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break Life in the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. We are, uh, we've got Nick Eatman. We've got Isaiah Stanback here joining us today. It is not still our mix-up week, so don't get that <laughs> in your head. We just got a couple people out. Brian nursing a little... A little head cold, flu, mm. something like that. Not feeling great. It's uh, going around. Yeah, it is. It, I know a lot of people who've had it, yep. and it don't sound like it's good. Oh, like no good luck bad. trying to get into the doctor's office. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you figured that <laughs> like out. Like today? Right? I'm like, uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Amber's not out today. She's out today as well. Hopefully, she'll be back tomorrow. I think Brian's actually out for two days. He'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, but we got Isaiah willing to jump in and I'll, I'll fill in for us. I'll and uh, and so we got actually today. I wanted to take some time to go back through. There were some things that we talked about with my crew last week. I had Barry uh, Barry Church on with me. I had Aisha Morrison on with me. Okay. And uh, and we did a lot of recapping of the first half. Gotcha. And I would be interested to hear some of the answers okay. that you guys have to some similar questions. So we're going to go through some of that stuff. Before we do that, though. Oh, I could play a game, too. I could be like Broadus, play a game. Even though I've talked, you got a game? You, I've talked to you six times this morning before I <laughs> not, none of it about the show. And then I bring this on on the what, air. You got a game? No, I, I don't really have a game game, but like you then know, why'd you say you have a game? Because it's similar to a game, but uh, whatever. <laughs> it's not really a game, but it could be. It could be a game. <laughs> You're all over the place. All right, go with your game. Welcome to me. I mean, like, no, I'm, <laughs> whatever. I'm, saying, I'm saying later on in the right. show we could talk about it. We we okay. did uh, on our website. We did like first half, best moment, worst moment, best. Game. You, is that what you have too? It's on my rundown. It's something we might get to if we had some time left. Oh, okay, the never mind. <laughs> He's looking at his notes. Are you still in the test scores? Maybe you should have brought that up <laughs> when, point, when I went to your office. At some point, he's just going to trust <laughs> me to know, exactly. to know I got this, man. I got this. I've been doing this for a long time. I got this. All right. I've been doing it a long time, too. You have. Was, yeah. Well, get your headphones. I, don't, I, 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 have, I have nothing. All right, let's actually let's get to some news. I do right. want to get your opinions. Uh, this weekend, there was some news that that I don't know if you call it broke, but there was new news that people were talking about yeah. that the Cowboys were firmly considering. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Um, I didn't put much into it because we know around here the Cowboys are as as do a lot of teams. They're going to do their due diligence. They're going to look at every option, and uh, that's what it sounded more like to me than than maybe what was being reported. And when the Cowboys aren't playing, you still want to see and figure out if your other news outlets how you can get the Cowboys involved because it helps with ratings. <laughs> that all being said, what would you guys think of that? Like, are you guys in the the camp of hey the Cowboys should really make an aggressive play to get an Odell Beckham Jr. No. Not aggressive. No. So, I like OBJ. I like him as a competitor. I like him as an effective football player. He is one of those generational guys. He's a specimen, all those things. He overcame a lot in his career already. Um, created, right? Huh? You said the other day about some yeah, people created, created. Yeah, he's created, not born. Yeah, yeah. it's two, two different things. He's, he's one of the guys that's in a That's a good category. way to put it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah. he's just Who different. were we talking about the other day on, on Hang With The Boys when you said that he's somebody who's created? There's a not handful born. of guys that are like that. There's, yeah. I mean, most guys are born. There's a handful right. of guys that are just created. And OBJ is one of those guys. I mean, I don't I mean, so. to come back from, all, you know, to go through all the stuff he went through early on in his career, okay, and then to overcome his injury, right, come back from ACL and be effective, go out there and win the Super Bowl, and unfortunately, you know, he sustained another one. He's going to come back. If he comes back healthy, he's going to help somebody. He's going to help a team. He's going to be come into the wide receiver room and be a valuable asset, be a guy that you can depend on. Hopefully he gets his get hot going into the playoffs. That's why a team's going to bring him in. What we do know about OBJ up to this point, all right, up to this point, is that he is a very passionate receiver. I put him in a passionate category. I don't call him a problem guy. You know, I've been with guys T.O. I've been with Moss. These are passionate players. He wants the ball. He doesn't want to be just a guy that's present. He doesn't want to be a guy that's just in the locker room, that's just on the field, being a decoy. He wants to have an impact on the game. The thing is, with certain individuals such as an OBJ, when they are so passionate and they don't get their fix, 
they can be a potential problem for you in the locker room. One of the issues I had with Dallas relieving themselves of Amari Cooper was that you were letting a, a true leader go. And you were hoping that you would have somebody else step into that fold. And I don't think that somebody has stepped into that fold yet in all the areas in which they were hoping would be filled. OBJ doesn't help that solution <laughs> in that regard. He can potentially blow it up. And, again, that's us knowing what he's been to this date. We don't know how he would be coming off a second ACL, understanding what role he's coming in. Is he going to be like a Jason Peters where I, I'm, a, I'm the veteran in the room now? We don't know. But what we do yeah. know is he wants the ball, and I'm not sure that his leadership – would be valued in this locker room? Well, that's a tough one because everything you just said, like the first part of it, all the good stuff was like, oh, okay, that's the stuff the Cowboys need. And then the so-called negative stuff, which is based off perception, and you're mm-hmm. saying that based off of what we've seen, and he's he's had enough sample size to go, this is kind of who he is. Yeah. But, you know, like I look at it like, is any of that a problem? Like I think what – I'm not putting words in your mouth, but what I'm hearing from that is I look at it like maybe the Cowboys don't want to hurt CD's feelings or Michael Gallup's, and maybe they need to be. Maybe they need to be ruffled a little bit. This is what this team needs. You say a guy that could come help the room, be a veteran, and wants the football and and help this team during playoff time. And I I could see the good out of it. I just – I don't think they'll do it. I really don't think they'll do it. But I'm not I'm really opposed to it, though. If they if they do, I don't. If it messes up the locker room, then then shame on Dak, shame on Zeke, shame on Tank, shame on Micah. If it me- if he messes up your locker room, then that's on you. That I think. I don't think. I, I think they've established enough where that's not going to happen. See, the the thing about it for me is I hear what you guys are saying. Those aren't the things I'm most concerned about. Mm-hmm. And let me be clear: if the Cowboys wanted to do this. I'm not going to be like, oh, uh, this is horrible, because you don't know. You don't know. And that's really the part that worries me is you're talking about a guy that now is coming off his second ACL. Uh, You're talking about a guy that's not a young player in the NFL. Um, You're talking about a player that at this point, the way I look at it, what is that time that it's going to take once he's healthy? Mm -hmm. That's the first hurdle. Then for him to get to a point where he's actually the freak that he was – and is that still attainable after two ACLs? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Is it still attainable this year? I don't need Odell to be good next year. I need Odell to walk in here and immediately be good because he's got a. They need help now, and 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 that's not something like the way I look at it is he's got to ramp up. Let's say for example the Cowboys did this and he was ready to go within the next two to three weeks. Mm-hmm. I would need him ramped up and ready to go by end of season so that when we hit the playoffs, like he has yep. not only passed that hurdle of being healthy, he has resumed his explosiveness. He is on the same page as Dak. Dak is on the same page with him. Mm-hmm. All these things have to happen in that month of time so that heading into the playoffs, you're getting the benefit of it. Otherwise, it's not worth the move. Yep. And that's the part that I'm more concerned about is – can can he still do that at this age with two ACL surgeries? Can he still do that? I don't question his physicality just because of the standpoint he's again he's not he wasn't he's not one of those athletes that's just oh, all right he's a good athlete he's, like, a, freak. he's yeah. a freak he's a freak yeah right so you have to put him in a freak category so you the expectations that you would have or the lack of confidence that you would have in most players that come back from something like this first of all he's already shown you that he's overcame it first time the first time that's right? two absolutely yeah. now it's two yeah. but guess what for him. His understanding of what it's going to take to get back, here's he's already done it. So as an athlete, the biggest portion of getting injured, trust me, I know, right, is can I get back to form? Can I get back to shape, right? Once you sustain that injury, it's like, crap, am I ever going to be the same guy again? He had those question marks already, and he overcame them. He came back. He was that same dude. He was that same and as, as impactful as he had ever been in his career, and he proved to himself and everybody else, yeah, I could do this. Unfortunately, he sustained it again. Guess what? I know what it takes to get back to where I was at before. But that being said, and I think this can sometimes be the biggest problem for athletes, mm-hmm. too, is their minds say one thing, but at some point your body's like, yeah, you think you can do this. You can't do this. Yeah. Like, you don't have the ability. And that's more what I'm concerned about is yeah. not necessarily him thinking he can get back. And he might actually think he's back. I look at some of these, and I'm not going to say any names, some mm-hmm. of these guys that are older who are still putting out these videos, showing themselves, working yeah, yeah, out, yeah. and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. they don't look great. Like, How many but games they, in their minds, I still think they still think I look good I enough it. to play, I and I don't know that anybody else does. How many games would you need him to play? 
Honestly, do if I, you were to sign an OBJ, he's not. He's still not. Um, from what we understand, he's still not healthy until what next month. Well, I did see. I did see this morning. They said that it was. I think it was Rappaport actually that was reporting. I think he's on TV right now. I think he was reporting that supposedly by the end of this week or next week he would be medically cleared. Okay. Now again, I don't know what that means. Like, okay. does that mean he's so, yeah. he's just at the point where now, okay, OBJ, you can go and run. Like, I don't right. know where he is in that recovery. Right, and and you got to be careful. Cleared by who? Yeah. I mean, because when you get cleared by a team doctor, you know, let's say like let's say Michael Gallup, he gets cleared by the Cowboys doctor. Like, that's a big deal. He comes out. If he doesn't perform well or if he has any kind of setback, that's huge to the medical team. That's why that they're so cautious about it. So, but who's clearing him? What what independent doctor or whatever is clearing him to play? Because what what it's no skin off their back if he comes out and he's not ready to go. So that I mean, I'm not Doctors are doctors, and you would like to think all of them are going to be honest and all that. But it's different when it's not a team doctor. So that's that's what I – I could be wrong. I don't know who. I just want to know who is clearing them because I – I mean, he. I'm sure he has all the available resources but, at his true. disposal. But, yeah. but, like, my question mark is, like, okay, yeah. You, even the OBJ that came back last year, I don't know how many games he played, okay? But there, he was effective. He played seven games with the Rams, and he played another – Wait, six games with Cleveland. Okay, there you go. So start at seven games. He actually played eight, but six with uh, with Cleveland. Okay, so my outlook on OBJ is you're probably asking him to play six games. You asking him to play six games? You said, Derek. You said like I, I just don't think it's worth it. And I guess I just want to. Well, ask. I didn't. I didn't say that. You no no. You, you said the last thing you said was. I don't know if it would be worth it. Yes, if if he can't get to the point where okay. he's playing at the level he was playing before, okay. by the time you hit the playoffs, it's not worth it. Yes, yeah. so worth worth what though? Worth the time? Worth the development of Jalen Tolbert or James Washington? No, worth, worth the money? Worth, worth the money? Worth because here's the deal: when you bring him in the door, true. it's saying something to everybody else in that wide receiver room. Mm. Good. So but wait, wait, but but I'm here's okay here's the problem. No, here's the problem with that. Sometimes, sometimes I think guys tend to they tend to reach for whatever they think is the opportunity. If you're telling, if you bring him in that room, the opportunity for somebody like Noah Brown changes, right? Mm-hmm. What he what he was doing before, he doesn't have that same opportunity anymore. So maybe his game goes down a little bit because he's reaching his opportunity just got cut. Do you want to really bring? This guy in with the expectation to the room, like, hey, man, we just brought in Odell Beckham Jr. But Odell Jack Beckham Jr. ain't really the same OBJ that we knew. He is – he's a, he's kind of a shell of that. And so that's why I, that, I, I hear you. That's so, why I'm so more concerned. One of the things when the word Dan Quinn, when that name was being thrown around to potentially coming to the Dallas Cowboys, I had already experienced him in Seattle. And I told everybody before he was ever a real candidate and got signed, I said, this dude, if you bring him on, he will change the culture of this team. Because it would be a competitive nature. is Nobody's going to just have secured spots, right, unless you're just a, a freak guy like Micah Parsons, right? Nobody just has their spot sold up, okay? You're going to have to compete for it every single play, and they're going to continue to bring talent in to challenge you and make you elevate your game. You're either going to elevate or you're going to get out. One of the two. Mm-hmm. Are, are You're seeing that on defense now. Mm-hmm. You're seeing that on defense. Maybe, just maybe, their offense is like, hmm, that worked for them. Maybe we should start doing the same thing. Right, and if you don't have, the, if you have those guys in the locker room that are unwilling, right, or incapable of stepping their game up to that level of competition, then get them out of here. Yeah, I, I get that, uh, yeah. but right now you got what you got, and <laughs> and I, I don't and think the trade I, deadline's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got what you got. So you getting them out of here? That's a next year thing. Yeah, that's not sure. a this year I thing. Hear you. And 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 I I don't think it's a I don't think it's a coincidence that we saw the best of Noah Brown when he was given the opportunity to step up and assume more. Now, does that change when you bring in somebody like OBJ? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and and I must be fair to to him. I mean, I think Noah Brown's had a, a really good year based ba- based off of expectations to me. But the best of Noah Brown was five catches for 75 yards against the Bengals. Yeah. I mean, and and that helped them win. I mean, they had to have that to win the game. I, I I look back at the the Eagles game or a playoff game late in the season and put him in the slot. And I just wonder what defenses view him. Yeah, Odell's had, he's been okay through a couple games here. He's pretty good. He had that one good game. Maybe he's not the same, but there he is in the slot on third and eight, as opposed to Noah Brown. Does it does it does it change things? Does it does it free up CD more or Gallup on the other end? You know, I, I just I still think 
having him there. I I, I guess I'm I'm selling myself a little bit more. I, I was kind of on the fence when it started, but I'm it's the, doing it's this. I'm I'm okay. I just don't see the risk reward being that big a deal. Now this is what will happen though. You play. Let's say they lose to the Titans, okay? And the Titans look pretty good on defense, whatever. They should have won that game last night. But say they lose to the Titans and OBJ gets one target. And, he, you know, there will be a headline on the website, OBJ colon, they're not using me like they should. And that's a story. You got to deal with it and all that. They won't do that if Jalen Tolbert says it mm-hmm. or if Washington says it. They don't, they'll do that for him. You know, and so you have to deal with that. You have to yeah. deal with your fourth, third, or fourth receiver. If he's the squirrel, boy, they'll find that. They'll go. They'll get him. You know, anybody else that doesn't do anything in a game wouldn't get talked to, but he would, and he might say something, and then there's a story, and you got to deal with that. That's my concern. Okay, and that's, that's fair. My greatest, that's it. my greatest concern with this. It's not his physical. It's not whether or not he can come back and be effective. It's what he can potentially do to this locker room that doesn't have sound leadership in that room. Yeah. That's that's fair, and that's why over the years you had backup quarterbacks that or head quarterbacks that weren't in the league. I'm not going to name names, but there's quarterbacks out there. They should go get him. They should go get him. Yeah. And the reason why you don't is because now you've got the most popular backup quarterback in the world, and he's getting talked to him for different reasons and all that kind of stuff, and it just creates a distraction because yep. he's not good enough. You'll deal with distractions if they're catching 10 passes for 100 <laughs> yards, Theo. You'll deal with that until they're not. But y'all think OBJ is – that's still that player. You expect I, I, that he's ready to be that know. player right I, I'm now. I'm not going to say that he's that player, but is, does he give you an edge? Yes, absolutely he gives you an edge. If he's even a shadow of what he was last year and years prior to that, yes, he adds value because oh, that's right such now, an indicting statement on the rest of this wide receiver core. It's not because— I think so. Because, that's why we're talking about I mean, it, right? You're not, who else are you putting in the OBJ conversation from this lock, from this receiving group? Uh, well, not, I mean, not was, really anybody, but but that's also OBJ that we knew. I'm, just, I'm saying I'm, ta- I'm talking about even OBJ from last year, even OBJ last right. year. Right, and if he's OBJ from last year, it is absolutely worth it. Yeah. You go get him. My question is, is he still that? That's but that's, the, that's, but that's the okay. point. But that's right? the thing is, every team in this league, he has all the leverage right now because every team in this league that needs help a receiver is going to talk to OBJ. There ain't a lot of options. It's not a lot of options. Yeah, so lot of he options has right all the leverage right now and he automatically gives you value because of what you're saying. You have to respect him obviously. Now all of a sudden if he comes in as your wide receiver three, your your third best DB is facing OBJ? Yeah, I think I think the Cowboys would be his number one target. I, I believe. You think? Yeah, I mean. We, you, I agree. Uh, go ahead. I, I just think they the Cowboys have – what he's looking for, yeah. what he should be, I would imagine what a he's looking at for. Another ring. A chance to compete. They're a top five team in the league yeah. right now. They're a top five team. They're a top five team that actually needs help at receiver. Um, he seems like I never met him. Well, I have met him in the Pro Bowl his rookie year, but I haven't. I mean, he seems like a guy that likes the limelight. He likes the attention, and you know what? This place actually gives you that. Mm-hmm. So, what? does he like the money? Because I, I don't think the Cowboys will be the biggest spender. Nope, they won't. Green Bay will. So, so <laughs> will he be willing to take less money to come here? Yes. Do you think? Depends on how much less. Yeah. Right. Depends on how. Well, much what less. we know about the Cowboys, you go they, they like go forward. They like they they often like to get deals, especially with these kind of players. They'll invest if they think it's a longer term player. If they don't see him as a longer term player, do I don't know. Do My question you? is like, are they are they going to be willing to step up and spend it's, as much as the next is team? This blowing I think, up your whole think, segment here. I think that's fine. It's okay. I think <laughs> Dallas. I was disappointed. At the trade deadline, that Dallas didn't make any moves. Yeah, I was really disappointed. We we, we talked about yeah. it, but every other team, I'm gonna say every other team, a lot of other teams that plan on being in this playoff run that's coming up, made moves to make themselves. Well, the that Cowboys much did better. too. They did it a week early. They did it the week early, yeah, absolutely week early. on defense, right? Yeah. But that wasn't that, that was a, a gaping hole for you. But guess yeah. what? You need something else. No, good, you're, good. And you're I gonna get need it. to score points yeah. in yeah. this in this in this conference and this division. I can't be disappointed if I if I can't see what the trade was and I can't see what was the offer because it sounds like they were they were trying. I mean, if you look at reports, but, are, but the guys that were going after like like you let a guy go. True. I know we can't say names. Well, we're, we're still, we're, everybody's still about caught up on who they let go. But I'm saying, but like, yeah, you're going to go after somebody who's getting paid the same amount? Like, what? why? Are you talking about Mari? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't say, no, like, no, you're you right, a but perfect, you're going like, back. That's a perfect athlete. Comes in, does his job, very yeah. dominant, doesn't talk mess, doesn't get angry, just leads the room, and you let him go, and then you go talk to somebody else who, who worth the same amount of money? 
Right, but I think you're trying to go back and change history. And like you, you're right. I mean, should have done. I, mean, I think everybody has said okay. that was a baffling move. This, I think everybody agrees is, with that. That was a baffling is move. This twice now. This is twice that this team needs to re- look at it. And this is it starts with Jerry, Stephen, Will McClay because they were here for all of this. That you go into 2018 thinking you don't need receiver help, and you end up trading a first round pick in the middle of the year for him. And then you let him go, and you go into the season thinking you got these guys, and now you're over here trying to get so. Figure out that you, maybe your receiver position, it, you need more than you think you do. And you're in, and that's happened twice now where they, they, they almost did that. You're right. They almost tried to get you know, a guy from and, – and, and you know what? I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't either. I'm glad they didn't yeah. because – I would have been mad about that. You, I would have been hot. Based off of what we've seen. I would have been hot. And I don't know if we can talk about it, the players. No, you can't I, say the name. I, I, but everyone knows that who they tried to get. Yep. And he hadn't played it down since. I agree. And I don't know if one. See, I disagree game. with you guys on that <gasps> one because I, the look, go look at his record. No matter what team he's been with, he's effective. But but so so if you're gonna talk about if you're gonna talk about hey I'll go get OBJ because he's still gonna produce and he's still gonna be you rank him in that wide receiver room. I, I think if you look at that guy and rank him in that wide receiver room. He's going to be up there but, near the but top. Like this, but like this, we, we talked about it earlier. You can't – I'm not giving out awards for effort. No, you I'm, get looking no effort. You get I'm looking no, at production. I'm looking at production. And I'm not even talking about player. I'm talking about acquiring assets. Uh-huh. You don't get any credit, Dallas Cowboys or any other team, Green Bay, all the other teams that quote-unquote try to acquire somebody. You don't get any pats on the back for making a valiant effort. The reality is you're one injury away at the receiver position from being in a freaking glass break scenario. Yeah. Because the teams that you're going to be playing going towards the se- or towards the end of the season, right? The Minnesotas, right? You talk about the Philadelphias, those teams that really matter in your in your freaking conference, in your division, those are the teams that you're gonna have to put up points against. And, and they you got have, multiple and they got yeah. they went out there and got more assets yeah. than they yeah. even need. Right, more assets than they need. Yep. Right, they address problems that they need to address so that they can make sure that when the, when every, if something hit the fan. They were still in a good position. If Dallas has one injury right now, receiver, freaking A. Let's go to our four tight end set again. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. better hope the defense stops them. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, the there you hope. go. All right, we're going to take our first first break. When we come back, uh, we'll get into some of this mid-year review. Go ahead and come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. When you build, you start with the foundation and home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America NA Equal Housing Lender Credit and Collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Two icons, one night. Music legends Billy Joel and Stevie Nicks will perform at AT AT&T Stadium on Saturday, April 8th, 2023. Tickets will go on sale Friday, November 11th at SeatGeek.com. The official 
ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Welcome back to the second segment of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the start. This segment brought to you by Blockchain.com. I know, Isaiah, you're not used to having a sh- being on a show. We got multiple sponsors. Like oh, We don't just have one. Wow. They got multiple sponsors because they like, wow. man, we want we want a piece of that thing. They're they trying call, to help you guys they out. Call, <laughs> they actually called me the other day. Sponsorship called me the other day and said, hey, we got another company that's interested in being Ooh. your sponsor. Like We just got sponsors. For real? Sponsors. I wonder who's in control of those calls. <laughs> not me. Not me. They handle that. They handle the sales, but <laughs> hey, I was just letting you know. You know, it's you all get, good. Man. Take it back to your show. It we gives you something. To more reads. Yeah. More more time <laughs> yeah. to cut into what we're talking about. Nick hates that. I he know hates he does. That. It's okay. It's okay. We got to make money around you here. Pay the bills, man. Got to make money. All right. Let's get into our mid year review. Like I said, these are some of the sh- the, the questions I asked to Aisha and, and Barry. What? That's a good idea. All right. I asked Aisha and Barry last week. But love to hear you guys thought on some of these topics. The first question I have for you is the player. Uh, who you expect to add more to the defense down the stretch, stretch between Jonathan Hankins and Damone Clark? Jonathan Hankins. 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 Why? Uh, Damone Clark adds depth and potential explosiveness and a whole lot of upside, right? I'm, I'm a Damone Clark fan. But Hankins is addressing a problem. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at some addressing a problem versus – Potential just flash and, you know, more depth and more, you know, whatever, more effectiveness. But Hankins is actually like your solution. And you saw that in the one game that he played. Obviously, they ran the, the – I mean, that's what they do, right? They, they they run the ball really well. But the plays that he was in there, mm-hmm. he was very effective. Yeah, I agree. I think also uh, – I think you're going to get a better Neville Gallimore and a better Bohanna because yep. of that. Uh, I think he, he's, he's here to help also. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence Terrence Steele's played better – with Jason Peters here, and 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 Tyler Smith's played better, and Connor McGovern when he came back has played better. I think I think Peters has helped. I also think it's like we talked about with the receivers. I think it's raised the bar a little bit. Like you better watch, you better watch your 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 back here because and watch your spot because here a guy's coming to take it. So I think he address, addresses the problem. I also think they're going to be better and deeper at defensive tackle mm-hmm. because those guys are going to raise their game too. What do you guys think about Barr? What he's done so far? Relative to Damone Clark, because you said it, it that Damone Clark adds depth. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's a situation where maybe Barr could end up losing playing time or maybe even think, his job as time goes on? I think, for me, I think Anthony Barr, I, I still think they're trying to figure out where he goes. And I think it's... It, I think it helps to have his versatility because you have Micah. I also think it hurts sometimes to have it because if that makes any sense. I just feel like you're trying to figure out places for him. And I never thought he was a linebacker at Minnesota. I always thought he was a pass rusher. Yeah, he was. And and I, you got Fowler. You, you've got Dorrance. You've you just got plays. And you're trying to put him at linebacker. I don't think he's as good there. This, to me, feels a little Keanu Neal-ish. Like mm, you're trying to figure him. out this spot for him. It sure would be nice if he could play it. But he's not a real linebacker. I think yeah. Damone Clark's a real linebacker. Just looks like an defensive end. Agreed. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, he's big. And as big as he is, the freaking uh, bar is bigger, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm excited about Damone Clark and what he can bring to that second level. I know he kind of got thrown into it uh, in, in the, his first first appearance. He wasn't expecting to play that much. He obviously, their injury call, you know, to the bar uh, allow for him to step into that fold. But bar is serviceable. I don't think I think he's 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 a guy that you want there because he's he makes the quiet plays right he makes yeah. the tackles all those things but to your point he's not a guy that you want lined up over a, over a running back and trying to you know guard him the things that they're asking their linebackers to do along with Vander Esch right so Vander yeah. Esch is the one guy that's not going to move I think that you want a guy that's more agile more explosive a little bit faster uh, to be able to go out there and make those plays all right next question who has been the bigger surprise Tyler Smith Terrence Steele or Noah Brown? Oh, Tyler Smith for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit more surprised that he's locked it down over there because I, I had high expectations for Steele. And I think Noah Brown has been good, but they're obviously trying to trade for help around him to not make him a number three, make him a four or five, which also helps your specialty. Did y'all not think that Tyler Smith could do what he's doing? Because, no. I mean, I think coming in, I think the expectation was that He'd be a really good player. He was strong, but he had some me, issues with with penalties. Let me ask you this. That's pretty much been what he's been, let right? Let me ask you this. If you get a great uh, report from Ty- Tyron Smith, are, is, mm. are you putting Tyron Smith back at left tackle? Ooh-hoo. We had this conversation Hold on, last I, week. I just ain't yes or no. I said no. I haven't gotten one. I said no. I said no. That is the reason why. 
Tyler Smith to me is the answer to your question because if if, if back in training camp, if you're like Tyron's going to get hurt and when he comes back, I don't know if he's going to get his job back. Who was expecting that based off of guys who can't even beat out Connor McGovern at guard just yet? I, I think that that would be a surprise. So the fact that we're even having this discussion about yeah. would Ty- Tyron come back, mm-hmm. that to me is, is is the answer because he has been phenomenal. Yeah. That's actually an interesting point, too. You said he, he couldn't even beat out Conor McGovern well, at he guard. Didn't. He didn't. He, he, and I, he I know, had it. I know he didn't. And and that's why I'm a little bit baffled when I hear people say when Tyron comes back, you plug in Tyron at left tackle and you move uh, Ty- uh, Tyler to guard. Well, Tyler couldn't beat out yeah. the guard. And by the way, Connor McGovern has shown you nothing that says he needs to be beat out at this point. He's playing pretty good football. So I, I don't see what that even so, works. You're basically gonna, you're saying all or none. Either you're going with Tyron and Tyler's going to the bench, or maybe, I mean, you can't move on the right side. Steele's playing well. So either he's going to the bench or he's staying at his spot. And that's where I have a hard time sitting the rookie after what he's done so far. You sit the rookie. He, I mean, until Tyron, Tyron, it shows you that he can't, you sit the rookie because he's your Hall of Fame left tackle who had a, you know, obviously he's had injury in the past, right? But he had a, you know, a injury in camp, messed him up, okay? You give him the chance out of respect. You give him the chance. So it's more about a respect, respect, not necessarily Absolutely. what you're getting on the field. Absolutely. It's a, it's a respect thing. I mean, he's when he's on the field, is he not right. one of the two most impactful players on your team? Well, he I, used to be. I think it's more than that. I think, was. I think it's more than that. I mean, it is about respect, but it's also about he has never proven when he's healthy. He's never proven to not be. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So maybe maybe that is what you're. I, I yeah. mean, it, this isn't just one of those like back in the day when they used to start the guy. You know, no. Like this like, isn't a uh, this isn't his play dropping off. You haven't seen Tyron Tyron Smith's play start dropping off can, significantly. I think you can make the case that maybe that's what they're doing with Zeke over over Pollard, you know, like almost out of respect. I mean, I, I think that's even more so. I don't. But that's another that's yeah. another topic. <laughs> that's a whole different list. question. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Tyron Tyron is Tyron, right? When yeah. healthy, you want him on your freaking left side. Did you did you not see or did you not see during camp any drop off in his play because I think that was the conversation we had last week. Is that during camp this year he didn't appear to be the same Tyron who just whenever you took it for granted. Like this has been for years now. You took it for granted whenever there's a rep where Tyron is out there, whoever that defender is, he's gonna get up, he's gonna do this. That means he lost. He's gonna go back to the side, was, and the next guy's was gonna he step terrible in. or was he no, not no, no. dominant? No, no, he just wasn't. He wasn't dominant, Tyron. That that every right. time he was right. up, that and, guy lost. And, right, and that is fair. Yeah. We, it also needs to be pointed out. We have never seen him go up against the best pass rushing team in the league. True. I mean that, that this team, we, as we found out now, we didn't really. Know we did see then. him go up against uh, Demarcus Ware regularly, right? Yeah. And again, Marcus didn't make a habit of beating him. And, no. and there were some good pass rushes here for a few years. When you think about some of those guys that, that had some year. ability, he did that one year. He made he him happen, and yeah. we were like, "Oh man, this is a bad pick." And then it turns out Ty- Tyron no. was great. That was just so he figured it out. Once he figured it out, he was like, "All right, I, young man, sit down." Yeah. But also, talk about figuring it out. I mean, Tyler Smith kind of figured it out at, at left tackle on the fly. I think he can do guard as well. I, I don't think, think he's a guard. I, this is a perfect, this is a perfect example of not every offensive line position is the same. Okay. It's just not. It's just yeah. like every playing receiver on the inside versus playing receiver on the outside. It's two totally different monsters, right? Yeah, you run routes. Yeah, you catch the ball, but your perception is different. Your outlook is different. Your spacing. Your your you know your everything, right? Your proprioception. All that stuff is different. He's not an in-the-box guy. That's just what it is, right? From what we saw, we're like, okay, we can put him in. It's going to be easier. Put him left tackle to, to left guard. I was a culprit of that, right? Same thing with Peters. Hey, left tackle, put him in at guard, right? And I still stand behind Peters playing at guard, but it's still different. He's not as dominant as yeah. he is, is when he's out there on the island by himself. You would think, okay, let's, it's easier when, you, when you're kind of in boxed box, in. Yeah. yeah, It's not for some guys. It goes faster. Yeah. Right? So, for, so Tyler Smith – Kudos to you, bro, for even bringing up this conversation in terms of your play because you've been effective as all get out out there on the left side, and there has been no question marks. All the question marks going into the season when when Tyron got hurt was, oh, crap. The backside of Dak, Dak's coming back, and oh, crap, oh, is he? Ooh, we're going to have some issues. We're going to have to go out there chip. We're going to have to do all. It's been good. It's been good. Yeah. But I think when Big Dog gets back, if he gets back, young fella, come sit down. Now, Now, if he mess up. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> be ready. Hey, look, stay warm. Yeah, stay warm. Stay warm. Stay on the bike. Yeah, but Keep well, stay on the bike. <laughs> but, but I, I would say, I, I'd be, I'd be interested in seeing if he could play guard Tyler Smith because 
What this team lacks to me is an inside push. And we and it's been – Biotis doesn't give it to you. Uh, I think Zach gives it to you for sure with leverage and all that. But you I think I, Peters does in the run game? Well, is he going to be in there? I mean, I'm talking about over McGovern. Are you just going to play Peters? Who, who are we talking about here? Is, I'm is, just saying, you're talking about the guard now, right? You're talking about Smith bumping yeah. in? Yeah, but, I mean, I, I have him replacing McGovern. If, if, if Peters is in there, that's a whole no, new conversation. But, the, but he's in there, but he's on the depth chart there. That's I don't fine. think I think Tyler Smith automatically just goes goes to one B at left tackle. Okay, that what I'm saying is is that I, I I'd like to see maybe him play at left guard because I want to see the, like that power. I, he's got power when he's when I look at Tennessee last night when I look at what the Eagles have and there's a Washington again. Washington <laughs> that's always been a problem. I just look at. Strength and, and power. they're about to get back their best defensive player. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Washington, they're an interesting team right now. I don't know if you guys noticed yesterday. Mm-hmm. If Washington would have won that game, all three teams in NFC mm-hmm. East would have been in the playoffs as of yesterday. That's all. All, yeah, four all four teams. would have been in the playoffs. Yeah. They would have been it's all the, those wild cards. Would have been NFC East teams. That's that that I mean crazy. Washington has put themselves right back into the they're in the they're, they're in the conversation like they're sitting NFC right is, outside the playoffs the whole right NFC is just it's actually a good here. thing because yeah. you know they they haven't played the Giants yet the Giants and right. Washington haven't played so all this is going to kind of sort itself it out at yeah. some point but it's still um, interesting and I think it's way better than a couple of years ago when the NFC I, East was just like I considered a, the worst in the NFL I made a statement last week and I said uh, you know the, the the toughest part of your schedule is behind you. Um, that's not true. I mean, not once anymore. you really look at it and now go, okay, because Tennessee kind of snuck up, uh, snuck up on me. I didn't realize that they were as good. I mean, Minnesota, yep. Minnesota is what it is. I mean, they're winning games. It's the same with the Giants. You can say what you want. Like I'm not worried about them, and you don't have to be worried about them. But they Respect win them. games. Yep, they win. They figure out ways to win, and they did. You thought Green Bay, you thought Indianapolis were going to be really good matchups. They are the ones you're least worried about at this point of these next several. This and I'll be honest with you, Jacksonville ain't a gimme game. Mm-hmm. Like Jacksonville used to be a gimme game. That ain't a gimme game anymore. That team, they play hard. They're like the Lions. They play hard. You catch them on the wrong weekend, they can beat you. You think NBC is trying to flex out of that game? Out of which one? The Colts. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That is around flex time, isn't it? They'll be flexing. Well, uh, 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 knowing them, they'd be like, let's do a trade. Like, We'll take that game back. Uh, we'll flex another Cowboys I was going to say, let's be honest, ain't nobody giving up a Cowboys No, game. I no. don't care what no. the scenario is, ain't nobody giving they, up a Cowboys they, I'm game. saying they may want to trade or something like yeah. that because anybody looks better than Cowboys Colts on, on, a, on a Sunday night. I mean, yeah. even Cowboys Jacksonville looks better than that. Cowboys Vikings, they would love to flex that one. I'm up. sure, but they ain't giving up a Cowboys. If they can't get another one back, <laughs> yeah, ain't giving up a Cowboys yeah. game. All right, we're going to take our final break. We'll come back. we got a couple more questions for these guys. We'll be back. DallasCowboys.com radio. The season is finally here. For months, we've been gearing up to win. Now it's time for the team that performs on any field, United Ag and Turf. With John Deere zero turns for mowing, compact tractors for loading, mini excavators for digging, Gator utility vehicles for hauling, implements for grading, hay tools for baling, United Ag and Turf for winning. The official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com for more. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. This sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper is on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? 
Bank of America NA equal housing lender credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Tis the season for Dallas Cowboy Holiday Youth Camps presented by Invisalign. Registration for one-day football and dance academy camps are now open. Don't miss your chance to send your athlete to camp at AT AT&T Stadium on December 20th and the 21st. Register today at dallascowboys.com slash academy. Use the code XMAS25 to get $25 off. That's Xmas25. All right, welcome back. Final segment of the break live from the SWBC Mortgage Long Studios at the Star. We're presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's get a couple more questions here before we end the show. This question is one that stomped our guys last week. Stomp, more important, stomped? stomped them. Like they were like, they took stomped? about a. What did I say? <laughs> well, I, I thought you I said stomped or stomped. We I expect stomped. you to say stumped, but you said stomped. I say stomped. stomped. Oh, because like, you got the. Like uh, Kirk yeah. Franklin stomped. Stomp. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a fraternity. I it was thing. A, is it? Don't y'all do some stomping or whatever? Oh, you cute dog. Yeah. Is that not right? <laughs> stretch. I'll stretch. You never see him get right. more upset when we I gonna, start stretching. We're gonna, we gonna move on. Let's, let's, here's the question. Here's the question. Don't throw up the hooks around Derek. Here's the like question. I'm doing it. Here's the question. More important to this team's success, Dak Prescott or Dan Quinn? Dan Quinn. Easy. That's not even a stumper or a stumper. Stomper, stomper, stomper. stomper. <laughs> Dan Quinn, if, the, if you don't have this defense, where are you at? We know where you're at without Dak. Mm. With this defense. With this defense. So why aren't – does he get hurt? I mean, what, what, no. what happens to Dan Quinn? Does he get sick? I mean, what, what – <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm saying – I'm just saying who's more important to the – Nick's tied up and No, out. we're not, we're not going to lose him. Gone again? Right, he's like he's – like, <laughs> I don't think we can lose him. <laughs> like I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at it like, like you just said. Say Cooper Rush has to play the next six, seven games, or Joe Witt calls what about the plays. Flu? Joe Witt calls the plays. Yeah. I think I'd rather Joe, Joe Witt calls the plays because you've seen it. Just run this. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, run this. Mike is still out there running around. I, I think I'm for that, and then I, I'll have Dak. I mean, so Mike is more important than Dan. Oh, yes. Micah is the most important player on the football team. Micah is the best player in the NFL. I don't NFL. know if I agree with that. You don't think? I, well, the reason why I say that Cooper is Rush, because— the, No, the reason— no, Clark. The reason, <laughs> the reason why I say that is because I don't know if we actually know Michael Parsons in the way we know Michael Parsons without Dan Quinn. Okay. A lot of, lot of different layers through all this. Um, <laughs> I. So you're choosing a Dak over— over Quinn, that's what you're saying. Dak over over Quinn. I, yeah, I, I I think Joe Witt can can take or whoever it is. I just just take the sheet and call it, please, and just run Mike all over the place and let him play. No? no, okay. I'm, I'm Dan Quinn through and through. Dak Prescott, to me, and I've always stood by this. I think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's a great quarterback. That's just been my opinion over the years. That's from velocity. That's from accuracy. That's from all those things. It has nothing to do with him as a person. It has nothing to do with his determination, his will to win, all those things. It's just from what I have seen, I don't put him in that elite conversation. Dan Quinn is an elite coach. There's just just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. What he's done for this defense, turning them around from the worst in the league to the best in the league, shows you exactly what the heck is going on there. This offense, okay, was number one in the league last year, okay, with Dak Prescott. Oh, awesome, okay. But all of a sudden, they're not at the top of the league. And obviously, he's only been made here for a couple of games. I get it. All right, people going to throw shade. But Dak is not a guy that could just drop back and throw the ball at you. Dak Prescott is not as effective unless he has that running game. He's not going to throw the ball 68 times and get you a victory like doggone Mahomes did yesterday. That was amazing. Right? He's he's <laughs> not that guy. He needs yeah. a running game. And I, I – and, that's not a knock on him. That's just the type of quarterback he is. And I think I would much rather have a Dan Quinn that's changing the culture, that's putting guys in position to be successful based upon their abilities that they have, than a, than a Dakota Prescott at quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I, again, I I don't really see the scenario this year of that happening. Now, <laughs> you hope not. <laughs> now, next year, I'm just ooh, saying. Ooh. Don't do that. Hey, man. I'm just don't saying. Do I don't want to live in a world without Dan Quinn. Okay. Uh, that, that's like, what I'm saying. Let's just say in some crazy scenario where he was going to be the head coach and he said, I don't want this as my quarterback. That's a decision where you're like, wait a second. Now you have to make a decision between the two. But right now, I mean, as opposed to maybe like the worst flu bug ever. I don't think hey, you'll have might to be. do that. It might be. This flute thing is kind of crazy yeah, right now, so maybe it is. Drink, okay. drink, drink Deja Blue. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> hydrate. I can see yeah, hydrate that, that, that question definitely stomped me because I, <laughs> I, I, don't, I see that. It was a, it was a stomper. 
All right, guys, we appreciate you joining us. We'll be back uh, tomorrow. We'll get into some other questions I have for these guys. We'll also take some questions. It's Tuesday, so we'll get lots of questions from you guys, whatever you guys want to talk about. It's a bye week, coming off a of bye week, so we'll have uh, some time to really be able to sit back and answer some questions from you guys. So till then, for Nick Even, Isaiah staying back. I'm Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!